Okay, guys, I am back again with uh, copyright had to come down. Reupload number two. This is from June of 2012. Uh, this one is so cringeworthy. I don't even want to put it back up, but I'm going to put it back up. Because, again, uh, this is maybe the second knife I ever worked on. It is a Benchmade um, 912 Nitrous Striker. We were issued a bunch of these a few different times. And they got abused and destroyed. I mean, we were issued them for Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, at one point, I think somebody had like, and, and they were just, they were, they were the, ugh, the military supply system was so terrible. Like they were just handed out like candy. I mean, I gotta say, um, yeah. Um, so I think at one point, like somebody had like five of them just, just had them because, like, it's ridiculous. Anyway, um, this is such a cringy video, but because of the whole copyright shenanigans with the end music showing the pictures, again, I had to take the video down. I'm putting it back up. Eh. 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 Hey everybody, I'm back with another custom knife project I'd like to show you, get some opinions on, and see how you feel about Anybody it. Anybody who's seen my very first video I put up about the Kershaw compound and my first custom G10 scales might remember I talked about a series of knives in the beginning of it that I carried and, and compared them to the Kershaw a little bit, but one of the ones I showed was a Benchmade Model 912 Nitra Striker. Uh, this is one of them, actually. I showed two. The other one was really just a blade, a broken, beat-up, beat down blade and I had talked about how I had basically used it to the point of death. Well, I found myself with a little bit of extra time, I found myself with a little bit of extra G10 and I really wanted to see if I could do something with that knife and one of the troops out here was interested in trading me something for that knife uh, if I could turn it into something workable. So I'm going to start right now by saying this project was completely off the cuff. I walked out to my little deployed workshop having no idea what I was going to do with it and it all just sort of happened in real time. Let's start looking at the, the plain old Nitra Striker. This is the standard NSN model, uh, Tanto blade, serrations, black coating, uh, D2 steel. This has been carried by military troops and civilians alike. I don't know how many of them are out there, but I know that it's very commonly issued in the U.S. military. A lot of people have it. In our unit, uh, it's been given out uh, and issued on two straight deployments. That's where I got it originally. And it's, it's, a very, it's a good knife. It's not a great knife, but it's a good the, knife. I think the real downfall of this knife, and possibly, in my opinion, the reason Benchmade has discontinued it, is because of the nitrous spring assist system. Whatever was done with the designing of this knife, number one, it, it suffers all of them. I mean, every single one of them from being tragically off-center so that the side of the blade scrapes against the liner. The liner lock is under tremendous pressure, and it's always pushing on that blade. So there's a fail right there. Second... It actually takes a good amount of force to move the blade past that nitrous spring and get it open. And you're actually expending almost as much energy as you're saving with that spring. So while it is pretty cool, feels good, great sound, fast opening, uh, I think there's a real reason why there's not a whole lot of models of Benchmades out there with the nitrous uh, system. They've gone to the coil spring, for example, in the Barrage 580, 581, 583, and so but on. But it's still a good knife. I like this knife a lot. I like the blade on it. Not a huge Tonto fan, but you know this one uh, has its uses. Uh, it feels pretty good. Not a lot of texture going on. I mean, you can see it is a textured G10 handle, but really doesn't give you a real good purchase on it or anything like that. If it wasn't for this jumping up here, your fingers would slide right off. And, and this actually is not the most comfortable in the world. If you look, when that spring is deployed, it's just kind of, I don't wanna say jagged or sharp, but not rounded off G10 over there. And so if you're doing some heavy cutting, it can kind of hurt your hand a little bit. This is my second one. I had a, a first one that I was issued in around 2005, somewhere around there. That is no longer with us. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, that has become this. Um, now I want to start by talking about the handle. I had some extra 1 8 um, black and forest green G10. So I decided to see what I could do with it. And the person that's going to be owning this knife they're kind of a, a nature animal lover or whatever, and it being kind of foresty colors. We talked about it. 
and what I was going for was kind of a, a plant leaf fern sort of sort of look and I actually I think I failed on that I think it looks like some weird dinosaur fossil myself but uh, other people like it a lot they like the colors on it they like the pattern on it um, it's just something that like I said I made up as I was going along not perfect by any means um, but it's there um, you'll notice also the the striker comes in black well this blade was so worn and so beat up that the only way to make it even in any way was to strip all the coating off and I say this about all my projects that I do out here I'm very short on tools, so I work with what I got. So I actually used a, a light sanding drum in the Dremel and took off the black coating on the clip and took off the black coating on the blade and uh, gave a once over on the liners just to brighten them up a little bit. The big thing that I did on this though, this was in such bad shape and was so just beat up. Using that spring, the nitrous spring, actually made this knife almost impossible to open. It's still very off-center, as you can see. Uh, it actually was to the point of being painful on your thumb to actually open this with the spring. So I uh, deactivated that spring when I took it apart, and actually this knife now opens beautifully. It's great. Uh, without the spring at all, it's just as fast, I think. Um, much easier to close one-handed, obviously. Uh, and it works perfectly fine without it. The only problem is... Just like with the original nitrous, you've got that open-ended G10 there, and I forgot to take that into account when making it, and I should have rounded off that edge a little bit, but, but oh well, I didn't. You know, lesson learned. But The blade on this original knife, and yes, this one does look a little trippy and a little crazy, <laughs> the blade on this knife was, was broken at the tip, so I had to make a new tip for it, and in doing so, um, I gave its, its new owner something a little bit wild, a little bit different kind of blade shape, just again, as I was going along, as I was sanding this off, uh, taking off that black coating. Uh, they wanted sort of a patina look on this, so I think I accomplished that, um, but still incredibly functional. Blade has uh, been resharpened with my Lansky to put a, a good angle on it at about 20 degrees and then sharpened by hand. And it is very sharp right now. It'll, it'll cut through just about anything you want it to. Uh, retain the jimping and the black thumb studs over here because I thought that look was nice. Um, but yeah, I just, I just kind of ground in that interesting little shape into the blade and uh, it's been very well received so far. The tanto shape is still mostly there. It's hard to see because the actual angle line that you would see on the regular nitrous very clear clearly is sort of mostly ground away and in the light it's hard to see that. But um, not a whole lot to say about this knife. I just, I think it was an interesting project. I had fun doing it. I took a knife that was completely useless and dead and found a way to breathe a little bit of new life into it, make it something different and unique. and. Um, the airman that's, that's getting position of this knife is super happy about it. They are very, very happy about it, and I'm happy that they're happy. Um, <clears throat> this blade style, actually, this is incredibly pointy right here. Uh, very good if you do need to pierce things. Nice edge for cutting. Um, one big thing, and I've warned about this in other videos talking about the high carbon steel, Definitely, definitely, after, especially after taking off the coating, you need to use something like tough cloth or some other impregnated cloth to put a really good protective coating on this D2 because it will corrode, especially having lost all of its coating like that. So this is coated right now. I'm not sure what effect that has on using it for food or anything like that, but I don't think that's what this knife is going to be used for. I think it's really just going to be an EDC in the pocket in uniform walking around all day kind of thing. Um, obviously we're not worried about too much tactical aspect or this would have been coated in some kind of black but liner lock still very functional locks up really well really good no play in it whatsoever so that went together really nice you can't see here but underneath uh, wherever the the liners hit it the original coating is still there I didn't want to affect the functionality of the knife so I didn't take off any of the coating inside in the operating area and you can sort of see that not really but sort of see that in there. So if I were to take these handles off, you'd see the original black coating right there um, and the silver areas where the washers go. But just something I did because I was bored because it could make someone else happy. So there you go. Benchmade model 912 nitrous striker. Very, very heavily modified. Uh, original military issue brought back from the dead and will go to a very good home. All right. Thanks for watching and I will be back with more projects soon.